been a minute. One of the first things I added to Bun after posting last week's devlog was an in-game cheat console. This is going to be a huge help to me in working on the game's progression without replaying it hundreds of times. I made myself a whole suite of console commands so I can skip around parts of the game, give myself money, you know, do whatever I need to do to get to a certain point in the game. This console is also going to be accessible to players when I release the game, so if you want to be a Cheeto, you can. I'll definitely also add some fun cheat commands before the game's launch, because who doesn't like cheating? I also got to scrap using Timeline for my cutscenes, which I'm kind of happy about, because it's a lot easier to call commands from Yarn Spinner than it is to add custom events to a timeline. Now every cutscene volume is set up so I can assign it virtual cameras in a specific order. Then I made a yarn command in the cutscene manager called next cam. So now what this means is in a yarn file I can just write next cam when I want it to go to the next camera and it do that. Being able to do things dynamically in that vein is going to make it lots easier for me to make things happen during cutscenes. This week I also redid the save and load system for what I believe is the second and last time. For the new system, any data that needs to stay persistent is part of a static hash table. Anywhere where I need to check the player's progress or see if you have enough money or whatever, I can pull it from the hash table by its unique key. This hash table gets serialized into a file when you save the game and populated from that file when you load it. By having a simple integer in the hash table called level, I can have cutscene volumes that delete themselves from a scene if you've exceeded their specific levels. So if I have a cutscene volume assigned to level zero, You'll see that cutscene the first time you go through them, and then subsequently they're auto-deleted in start if you're past that level. I can now just add cutscenes wherever I want, assign them to the right level, and I'll encounter the right ones at the right time in the game. The dust map has been kind of a mess for a while, since it was the first map I ever made while I was still turning Bun into a 3D platformer. This week, I decided to have a go at simplifying and condensing the map so there are more interesting hazards and challenges in less space. I built these models in Blender instead of using Pro Builder like last time, since I'm confident enough in the style of level that I'm going for now that I don't need to build everything in Engine. I added an Indiana Jones style boulder hazard that you're kind of baited into at the beginning and a lever to turn it off, though it doesn't really go fast enough to pose a threat, so I'm not really sure how I feel about it yet. I'm probably going to end up removing that. I also tied levers that open doors to cutscenes, so now you always know what door you open if you find a lever. Hopefully this makes levers more like a ooh yay progress and less of a I wonder if I'll ever figure out what that did type of deal. I also started reworking pastel following the same theory, trying to add the least amount of space possible. The more empty space that I add, the more I have to fill it with interesting things for the game to feel right. So I think if I develop these maps slowly, area by area, without getting too ambitious with space, I can finish some solid maps for the game. So even if they're small boys, they will be good boys. Finally, I at least wanted to call attention to this Santa hat that has been on Bun for the whole video. A couple months ago when I was first showing Bun to some of my friends, they suggested that I add hats, probably because we all have fond memories of playing TF2. I didn't want to add them too early in the devlog series and make people think I'm focusing too much on cosmetics, but I was feeling festive and decided I should try rigging up floppy Santa hat just for fun and to give content that I create this month a little bit more relevance. I'm so happy with how the physics behavior came out that I'm pretty sure I'll add at least a few more hats and some way to pick what hat you're wearing. And they'll probably be secret collectibles or expensive in-game purchasable items like with in-game currency. All right, that was my last few weeks of indie game development. Make sure to wishlist Bun on Steam if you want to. Happy holidays, everyone. I hope you're all doing all right. Love you guys. See ya.